In this video, we're going to develop the minimal amount of linear algebra necessary to understand the Eigen decomposition. So we start with the concepts of vector addition and scalar multiplication of a vector. These lead us immediately to the construct of the linear combination, in which we have a set of vectors called basis vectors. We scale them individually by a set of numbers, c1 through cn, and we take the resulting sum. One interpretation of the linear combination is that the value c is the representation of the vector v in the basis b. Often when we encounter a linear combination, we know the value v, and we know the basis b, and we would like to know the value c. Or in other words, we would like to know the representation of the vector v in the basis b. This problem is equivalent to solving a system of linear equations, which can be done using Gaussian elimination. An alternative approach, and one that the Eigen decomposition relies upon, is to consider a mapping between vectors v and the vector c, if the vector c is the numbers c1 through cn gathered into a vector. So let's look at the idea of a vector transform, which is a mapping between a set of input vectors and a set of output vectors. Linear algebra is the study of linear transforms. Linear transforms are those that, if addition is applied in the input space, and then we take the transform, it is equivalent to taking the transform first, and then applying addition in the transformed space. Linear transforms have the property that they can be uniquely identified by specifying their behavior on a finite set of input vectors. We will illustrate this by example. Consider the following linear transform, which maps 1, 0 to 1, negative 1, and maps 0, 1 to negative 2, 3. The claim is that this transform with the assumption that it is linear, has been uniquely identified, which means that its behavior on any possible input can be computed. So let's see the logic of how this is done. If we consider the input 3, 4, which is not explicitly considered in our representation of the transform, we can nevertheless write the input 3, 4 as a linear combination of the input basis vectors specified by the transform. And then using the properties of linearity, we can reorder the sequence in which we apply the transform versus applying vector addition. Likewise, we can reorder the sequence in which we apply the transform versus applying scalar multiplication. And then we can finally perform a direct substitution as specified by the transform to compute the value of the transform at the input 3, 4. Now let's return to the problem of finding the representation of a vector in an arbitrary basis. Or in other words, solving the linear combination equation for the number c. We claimed earlier that we can think about this as a mapping between vectors v, mapping to output vectors c. If we can prove that this mapping is a linear transform, then we only need to solve the linear equations for a finite set of possible input values v, and then we can deduce the vector c for all other possible inputs v. So is the mapping v to c a linear transform? Well, for it to be a linear transform, it has to satisfy the equation that t of a plus b equals t of a plus t of b. Now the vector t of a plus b is the representation of a plus b in the basis b. So using summation notation for the linear combination equation, we can write that the vector a plus b equals the sum of the coordinates c for the particular basis vector b. The vector t of a is likewise the coordinate c for the representation of a in the basis b. And the vector t of b is likewise the coordinate vector c for the representation of b in the basis b. Since a plus b equals a plus b, we can gather like terms to show that for every i, the coordinate of the vector a plus b in the basis b is equivalent to the coordinate of the vector a in the basis b plus the coordinate of the vector b in the basis b. So therefore, the mapping from v to c is a linear transform and can be represented by a finite set of input-output pairings. Indeed, this is the first step of the Eigen decomposition in which we are mapping from a standard basis to the Eigen basis using a linear transform. In the next video, we will work through a numerical example demonstrating the ideas in this video. And then in the third video, we will arrive at the Eigen decomposition.